All right, guys, we got a few more questions here, and we've moved over to the arm wrestling table to actually, we have some technique questions, so not my favorite thing to do, but um, because I think that we all pull differently, but the, question that, the questions that I'm gonna answer would be, instead of how do I top roll, it would be, Travis, how do you top roll? So I really can't show you how to do it, but I can show you what I do, and if there's anything you can take from it, great. So the question is from uh, Pump, uh, what is that, Bells, Pump Bells, and um, he says uh, um, how to set up a good posting top roll. So the reason I picked that is because that's pretty much, I think, if you, um, if you watched me arm wrestle, you maybe would think that that's exactly what I was doing, and I've had people describe that. Uh, John Brzezinka said, you know, when you and um, Dave Patton have that posting style top roll. So what I think that he kind of means by that is um, just a good setup for a knuckles up high outside move. Um, I'm gonna bring Art in here. Art, if you could just put your elbow down there and put that hand. So, for the most part, um, there's usually this, um, this, um, I guess, inches um, that your elbow is away from your hand, right? So, it's whenever I walk up and I, I'm watching an arm wrestler, if I see his elbow anywhere not way up in the front and his hand not straight under his hand, then I know that he is vulnerable to being opened up, right? So for me personally, when I first see someone back that far, I think two things, either he doesn't really know what he's doing, which is good, or he really knows what he's doing and he understands that this is the best place. However, he knows who he is personally. So this, for whatever reason, is the way that he's gonna attack. And it's an advanced setup. You know, I always have to think about that, right? Either, um, you know, depending on who he is, the accolades that he has. Um, but I will tell you this, I've met very successful arm wrestlers that really don't have a clue um, from what I'm coming from, but they're just actually stronger than everyone else. So for me, if you ask me what would be a good setup for a good posting thing, um, I could do exactly what he did and leave that angle as well, where I would have my hand out in front of my elbow. And what I tell people all the time is that if I drop something from this ceiling straight down, it's easy to crash down on that arm. However, if you put that elbow way forward, to the point that the referee is constantly telling you to get that thing back. Right away, when your hand is underneath your elbow, right away you stop any of that stuff, right? You no longer are vulnerable here. And now, and you'll notice too, when you first start arm wrestling anyone on the kitchen table or the lunchroom table, as soon as you start to gain some position on them, one of their best defenses in the, in the lunchroom is to throw that elbow, just keep throwing it forward, right? You've had them kind of run you all the way over there. And so it's just simple. Your elbow coming forward will protect your hand from opening up. And what I mean by that is if your elbow is back and your hand is facing my chest or stomach and you make a fist, and as long as I get in there with them fingers, I can open them fingers up, right? It's just a matter of time. If you throw that elbow forward, there is no way for me to properly open those hands up from up there. I have to then come out of your hands this way, which right away protects your hand a lot more than this, right? We see this is opening. If he throws that elbow forward right away, I'd have to be up here with that pressure. Rising pressure would start to open his hand, but the traditional side pressure would actually just turn his hand this way, and you would get into this finger battle, which is much more um, of him, it's much more protective of him to either getting the strap or getting a hold of those fingers. So I will urge everyone, when you first get up here, make sure that your elbow is way in front of your hand. Keep that hand on your side of the table and the elbow forward. The exercise we do with the strap, the most important thing about the exercise is that your elbow is in front of your hand. This will be the first thing that you can start to move back to start to generate some movement. If you suck it in already, it's gonna expose your hand a little, the angle, and more than that, when you say go, you have to then use it as a lever because you won't be able to move it, okay? So a good posting top roll would have his hand pointed straight up in the air. When, when he was to close his hand, 
what I try to do is to rise over top of that hand as I close my hand. So I've trained Art before, so we'll see if Art can do it. What we're looking for is for when Art's about to arm wrestle that he is on his tiptoes looking down at his hand. All of his weight is on his front foot, but because he is very trained up at having his elbow away from his body and fighting with that strap, he will still have back pressure even though he's on his front foot and leaning forward, okay? So elbow away from his body, hand straight up in the air. When, as that referee tells Art to close his hand, he should be rising to his toes and looking down at his fingers. Let's see if he does it. Close your hand. Beautiful. And I tell people all the time, you can relax, Art, that cocking that gun is the same as if you're on the pitcher's mound or in the batter's box. The referee in the set grip will give you an indication of when he's gonna say go. If you take the match to the set grip, you can dictate and you can figure out when he's gonna say go. When does he say go in the, in the World Arm Wrestling League, in the National Arm Wrestling League? They tell you to close your thumb, close your hands, and the next thing is go. So one of the big things we practice here is ghost arm wrestling him by himself, right? We look from the silhouette and what we want to see is his body really close to the table, but his elbow far away from his body, his elbow way on the front part of that and his hand straight up in the air. When they tell Art to close his thumb, he's going to take that deep breath and adjust those hips and feet because he knows he's about to throw a punch or hit that ball, right? And in order to do that, he needs to rise and really cock that gun, right? So if you were gonna throw a pitch to me, as soon as you got in your windup, that leg come up, I would then start my hitch. If I'm throwing the ball, right, I'm gonna raise this leg before I make that pitch. When I'm gonna hit this guy in an arm wrestling match and try to beat him, I'm gonna do the same thing, right? I'm gonna wind up and cock the gun is what we try to call it. So his hand is gonna be really wide, open and strong. Right, his hand gets strong from doing countless plate holds, right? And we'll show you that exercise fit. So all of this is rock solid. His elbow is out below his hand. We want his back to be leaning forward, but not too far. He needs the ability to kind of straighten that back out at any point as he's rising above. The referee is going to tell him to close his thumb. He adjusts those hips. When he tells him to close his hand in a second, he's going to rise and cock that gun. Close your hand. And then the next word is go, and he goes ahead and finishes all the way down. He recoils up in a nice balanced position. Let's go over it one more time. Elbow in front of the pad, hand up. Remember, as he rises above his hand, what he doesn't want to do is what he just did and let that hand move forward any. So as you rise above it, your hand stays there. You do not lean forward as you do it. All right, let's try it again. All right. From there, our hands way strong and up in the air. We're gonna close our thumb, close your hands, and go. That is a good posting top roll setup. My man, that's good shit right there.